Cool, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to outline five of the builds that I am considering as League starters in patch 3.19. Now, it's important to say that Path of Building has only just been updated, so you'll be able to update that now if you haven't already done so, and flesh these ideas out, or alternately, I'm going to flesh some of them out on my stream over the next couple of days. But for the moment, these are just the core interactions around which a build can be designed. So firstly, we want to just reiterate that this is going to be a new meta. If you look at day four of Sentinel League, there were about 15,000 players that had reached level 92. And whilst diversity in builds would improve later, at this point, 60% of them were playing one of six builds. So 14% were playing Seismic Trap. This skill has been completely gutted and it is now a trap. 12% were playing Righteous Fire, augmented with Fire Trap. This was nerfed, but still looks pretty strong in 3.19. I certainly won't fault anyone that chooses to go down that path. Explosive Arrow Balliste was next at 11%. This is nerfed moderately, but it should still be fine. These were Ignite-based builds, and this skill with Ignite is copying about a 20% less multiplier to the total damage it deals. 9% of people were playing Skeleton Mages. That is a build that is dead and buried. 8% of people were playing Lightning Strike. This is fine despite an apparent nerf, and it's one of the builds I'm going to recommend today. And 6% of people were playing Detonate Dead, which is a build that is detonated and dead now. How let's have a look at the thoughts that I've got in mind. Firstly, Explosive Trap Crit. Now here you've got a starting choice. Do you go Saboteur for Trap Nodes, or do you go Inquisitor for Elemental Critical Strike Scaling? Can't fault either path. I think I'd probably recommend Inquisitor, but that needs to be tested in Path of Building, and potentially also tested with a playthrough of the game. Now this skill sailed under the radar because Seismic Trap eclipsed it, but it's still genuinely good. It's actually genuinely good in 3.18. It was genuinely good in 3.17, 3.16 as well. People didn't play it because Seismic Trap was a similar playstyle and better, but now Seismic Trap is a trap and Explosive Trap is better. Now this scales a very large amount with gem levels, damage, radius, and number of explosions all scale this gem. One very important warning if you are considering playing Explosive Trap, this skill is blindingly bright on the screen. Imagine staring into a strobe light that someone has projectile vomited onto. That is how ugly this skill is. I would highly, highly, highly recommend respecting one of your old builds in standard into an explosive trapper and just seeing if you can tolerate the amount of projectile vomit that goes all over the screen, because that's what it looks like. It is a disgustingly ugly skill. See if you think that that graphical effect is something you could tolerate playing with for a long period of time. I certainly will not fault anyone that says the answer is no. Next is Occultus Solrend. So Solrend got a boost to damage in this patch, which is just a little bit worse than plus two gem levels. It has something like 24% more damage than it did previously. Now, pre-3.19, you might have considered either the Occultist or the Trickster. While the Trickster has, broadly speaking, been buffed in 3.19, it does not have the synergies for damage over time skills it used to have. And for that reason, I think it is now just Occultist. Occultist offered more anyway. You've got Profane Bloom, you've got Plus One Curse for Bane, and you've got Withering Presence. This is an amazing overall package. Now, with the Occultist, you can run a three curse setup. You can run Despair, which is a straightforward damage curse. You can also run Temporal Chains, which does two things for you. Firstly, it slows enemies down, which makes them less likely to be able to interact with you. And then also it extends the duration of debuffs on them. Guess what Solrend is? Solrend is a debuff. So is Bane for that matter. So both of these are going to increase your damage. Then you can add Punishment in. Punishment is a curse that a lot of people have forgotten exists, but it is so, so, so good with Profane Bloom on the Occultist. When you do kill one enemy, that will often explode, dealing massive amounts of chaos damage to everything around it. When it does go boom, this will often cause overkill damage to other nearby enemies. Some of these will then have a Profane Bloom explosion themselves, and you'll get that lovely popcorn sound that you're used to if you're playing an Occultist, and they're destroyed so utterly that they don't even leave a corpse on the ground. So that's the Occultist option. I really like this, and I think it is the way to play Solrend if you want to play Solrend after the buff. Solrend was capable of doing the feared in the past. There have been a few players who have done it in SSF in previous leagues. They've taken that through to the feared, I don't know how to go against uber bosses. I would see this more as a safe mapper than as something that would be extremely strong in a bossing environment. Third option is to risk a new skill. So the damage numbers on both Galvanic Field and Lightning Conduit look amazing, but the damage projection is the big unknown. Now, I think there are three ascendancies to choose between here. The Raider grants you speed, phasing, spell suppression, exposure, and a god tier forbidden jewel option for builds that are always concerned about inflicting shocks, uh, with that forbidden jewel both causing your shocks to proliferate and also to have double their intensity. The Elementalist is a glass cannon, but a glass cannon is still a cannon, and with a lot of gear you can make a tanky Elementalist as well, 
But even from early on, you can have a glass cannon build, die occasionally, but get a lot of fast mapping done. Or alternately, you can go the Trickster. The Trickster is tankier and slower than the Raider. It's got a better starting tree location than the Raider does, and whatever you play, critical strikes look promising, but all of this is pending path of building analysis first, and then after path of building analysis, and after it passes the path of building analysis, it then needs to actually work in game. That's gonna be the key thing. Does the damage projection feel good on these skills? That's the sort of stuff that is the big unknown with risking a new skill. Ultimately, if you wanna try them out, then just have a backup plan. So for instance, if you decide that you wanna go with an elementalist setup, then maybe a backup plan is a thorough respec into the Soul Render Cultist we were talking about before. Next is the Bone Shatter Thick Juggernaut. At high gear level, the Juggernaut can face tank Uber Pinnacle bosses and Simulacrum Wave 30. Divergent Bone Shatter can do 50 plus million DPS once it gets rolling, so there's a lot of potential power there. Getting to that point is non-trivial, but it's not impossible, and you can let your foes break themselves upon you. This build gains a lot from Doppelganger guys, which is an expensive item and rare in week one, although it does tend to become more accessible as the league persists. Additionally, Doppelganger guys has a very important role on it that ranges from 30 to 40%, and with Divine Orbs more expensive, you might end up having to settle for 38% or so instead of 40% like you would have rolled for in the past. But even then, Arctic Armor has been buffed, that helps this build, and it was already pretty solid. I know someone that made themselves a lot of currency farming Simulacrum first, and then Uber Pinnacle bosses later using a build like this. Next up is Lightning Strike. Now, Lightning Strike is something that can be played on the Champion, the Raider, and the Berserker. All of them can be really good with this skill, and you can also be a little bit more of a hipster and play it on other characters as well. Now, there's a very concerning line of text in the patch notes that reads, fixed a bug where Lightning Strike could hit a single target twice from one attack. What the intention here is that when an enemy is walking away from you, they're actively walking away from your character, there was a bug where they could be hit by the projectile twice. Now, it sounded much more scary than that when people read that note, but that is being clarified by GGG as what is intended. Now, Hate Forge is something that will be neither cheap nor accessible, but it is back and it will be available as an ultra, ultra, ultra endgame option for builds like this. I do not expect that Hate Forge will be available to the majority of players or anything like it. Think of this as being a Mage Blood tier optional extra in the ultra, ultra late game, but it will be back available in 3.19 as far as we know. It's worth pointing out that with Lightning Strike, of the 86 people who had a bottled faith in solo self-found by day 14 of last league, 24 of them were playing Vile Lightning Strike. That's considerably more than were playing any other builds. And that should give you a sense that this is a balanced build that is capable of both killing bosses like the Cortex and also capable of very smooth mapping so that you can actually have those Cortexes drop for you in the first place. And this is something that you'll see a lot with this skill. It's something that is a good all-arounder. It's not the best at anything, but it is very good at bossing and quite solid at mapping. Anyway, that's my current shortlist. I'll be streaming over the next couple of days when I'm going to be trying to put together some thoughts on exactly how to design these builds, and then I will probably be in a better position to make some firm recommendations later on. But until that point, may your Valorbs have interesting results, and I will see you around.